So now we have improved exposure. I can see we have incus here, the incutospedial joint. When you gently touch, you can see the joint stretch right here, the stapedial tendon, the anterior cruce, and the posterior cruce back here. Facial nerve can be seen medial to the incus here. Uh, laser. Next, we're going to separate the incutospedial joint. Lasers in standby at four watts. Have laser blasts on yet? This is the uh, this is a uh, CO2 laser carried through a uh, fiber optic um, uh, cable, and we are using settings of four watts and 100 milliseconds pulses. <coughs> laser on. Laser on. I like to use laser to first uh, sort of vaporize the mucosa surrounding the joint. Sometimes it can be quite thick, and when you're trying to cut through it with a knife, you can uh, be pulling on the stapes quite a bit. So, so I'm firing right at the level of the capitulum between the incus and the uh, uh, capitulum of the stapes. Incutostapedial joint knife now. Next, we'll use an IS joint knife to further separate the incutus peel joint. If I lift up now, I get a nice clean plane between the two. Good. Again, we have good movement of the incus and, and malleus. Uh, laser back. Next, we'll cut the stapedial tendon. Laser on. Laser on. Suction in my left hand. Very thick uh, stapedial tendon. Once the tendon is cut, I can now have a nice direct line of sight at the posterior cruce. I'm going to now use the laser to cut the cruce as close to the foot plate as I can. And Lorna, we'll go to a 24 suction now. back. Laser on. Laser on. So we still have a few more areas of this posterior cruise. We're going to laser now. And then this is an unusual, somewhat unusual um, situation where we actually have a very clear view of the anterior arch, often just due to the angle. Uh, uh, you can't see the anterior arch as well. Laser. So this affords us the opportunity to actually go ahead and cut the anterior arch with the laser as opposed to actually fracturing it. Laser on. So now I'm going to use the laser to go through the anterior arch. Again, we want to try to cut through as close to the foot plate as possible so we're not leaving too much of a uh, remnant of the crura still attached. Uh, now a barber needle. So next I'll use uh, an instrument just to kind of break up these, this char that's still attaching the stapes. And now the anterior arch is separated. And next we'll separate the posterior cruise. and actually remove the, uh, there's still a little bit there, uh, laser.
Okay, now the light, the, the uh, Okra is completely separated. Can I have a suction now? And we will just remove the uh, arch of the stapes here. A pair of cups. I don't think there's enough suction on here. Okay, now a, a micro foot plate hook. There is a little remnant of the um, Kura, so with a small hook we can kind of free that, clean that up a little bit. What's that? Okay. And then we're going to need a measuring rod next. Yep. Man, he is moving. Next, we're going to measure the distance from the Incas to the foot plate. This is a 4.5 millimeter measuring rod, so it's 4.5 millimeters from the tip of this instrument to the small barb. So when measuring, this small barb should reach the top of the Incas. And it may be a little bit, just a hair short. It's just about right, actually. Probably going to need to be about a. Um, do we have a 4.75 by 0.5? Next, the, we'll use the laser to make our fenestra. We're going to make the fenestra in, a, in a, uh, approximately the mid portion of the foot plate. He does have a lot of little blood vessels here, so we'll actually use the laser to coagulate these laser on. is actually pretty thick. Um, let's have the prosthesis next. And a little bit of water. Okay, now the um, posigator. Barbara needle next. Pretty thick stuff still. I'm actually scraping some of the char off of where we've lasered. This back part is thicker than it is anteriorly. 
Now I'll 24 suction and then I'll take the laser back. <clears throat> And when I'm suctioning, I have my hand off of the control hole, so we have low suction. Okay, laser back. Laser on. Thick. I don't know how easy that's going to come out. See how it's a little bit mobile with the... Like the whole segment? Yeah. Try to break up and get that char off of there. Uh, uh, suction now. <clears throat> uh, it's a foot plate, but that's okay. What? That's okay. It's a weird foot plate. Um, so, uh, suction now and then the laser. It's a lot thicker than it looked. Okay, now I'm starting to get through. That thing just has a little ball on it and a rasp. Mm -hmm. Let's just scrape off the charm. Uh, we use it to actually make the opening bigger. White Lorna. He's got a pretty big, um, yeah, I mean, a very thick foot plate. So with this rasp, I'm going around the margins of our fenestra and just sort of smoothing out these edges. As much as I can. Unfortunately, we have not had any bleeding. Quite a. We have our fenestra now. Can I have a six millimeter now? Our uh, piston we're going to be using is a five millimeter piston, so we want to make sure it's going to fit in there. This is a six millimeter rasp wipe.
plate is trying to come out. And next we'll take the prosthesis. You just don't want the CD to touch anything. And you hand it to it. Throw it in and if you don't hold it shut, it'll come off. Now can I have a uh, foot plate hook? So now the, uh, the piston is through our fenestra and now we're just going to reposition the, the wire loop kind of where we want it on the Incus. Maybe scoot it up just a little bit. This is, usually you want it uh, at about the distal one third, but uh, his Incus tapers a little bit towards the tip and so you want to give yourself some distance so it doesn't get, have a tendency to slide off the bottom. And then I'm going to also just gently, before we crimp, make sure it, that it moves and it does move freely within our fenestra. Okay, laser. This is a, um, an, a nitinol memory shape uh, piston. Uh, so it is a wire loop that has a combination of titanium and nickel and will, when heated will reassume a preformed shape. So we use the laser to actually crimp the prosthesis. Laser on. Laser on. And we'll just touch it a couple times. And then that should do it. Barber needle. And we'll just check and make sure that it's pretty secure on there. And there's good movement of it with movement of the Incus. Yes, yeah, so the problem with most Stapes prostheses, uh, wire loop type prostheses, is that if they're crimped too tight, they'll strangulate the Incus and you'll get necrosis of the tip of the Incus. Or if they're too loose, the vibratory motion will gradually saw through the Incus and they will uh, then fail. Uh, bucket handle prostheses uh, avoid this problem just by their, the inherent way that they fit onto the Incus. Um, so that is an, a different alternative, although they can have issues as well uh, with, with other problems. Unfortunately, no one has developed a 100% foolproof Stapes prosthesis. Um, next, we're going to take a little bit of subcutaneous tissue from the uh, thicker area underneath our tympanomiatal flap and just put a little bit of tissue around the base of this prosthesis, and then we will be done.